With satisfaction in the world that we live in at an all-time low and nostalgia for the world we used to have at an all-time high, in a way, it's almost the perfect time for a film like Ready Player One to come out. Based on the novel by Ernest Cline, directed by visionary Steven Spielberg, this film has come out. And uh, a lot's been riding on this one. There's been a lot of anticipation. And uh, we're going to sit here and have a little conversation about whether or not we think it paid off. Uh, Today we have with me Heather. Hello. And I'm Dylan. And this is your own, the Grey Film Debate. So to start off, Heather, what were your expectations going into this film? What did you know about it? What were you thinking? Did you think you were going to enjoy it or? Well, I thought I was going to enjoy it. I thought it was going to be quite good. I didn't know barely anything about it. I knew that it was, I knew that it was based on a book and that, um, uh, it was not the same as the book and, um, but basically that they kept the core concept, but they'd made it more interesting for, you know, larger, demo- basically for a larger demographic and all ages demographic, whereas the book was targeted a bit more so it. Did any of this have anything to do with whether you were interested in seeing the film or was it just sort of like background noise? I wasn't interested and it wasn't on my radar until I saw the trailer. Okay. And the trailer then made it seem interesting for you? The trailer just made it everything and I was like, okay, well, I don't really have super high expectations because I'm like, well, it's Spielberg, could go, hmm. you know, it could be good, could be bad. He's uh, had a spotty record of late. Yeah. And I'm like, uh... uh I wasn't scared, like, I, I was prepared for this to be good. I was prepared for a headache, mm. um, but I was so happy with it. I'm. It, this has got to be, if it's not my... It, Spoiler alert, she enjoyed it, but whatever. Yeah, it's like my top, if not my favourite movie Your this favorite year. Your favourite film so top far this year, five you, this you've year. said. I mean, after, you know, this is the year that's given us three billboards, the, the year that's given us Shape of Water. Well, but I mean, this, this kind of movie is exactly what I like. Annihilation. Uh, true, yeah, but... Again, like it's I a said, high it's, contender. Yeah, definitely, and it's because I'm as much as I like all those other movies, and I've given them rave reviews. This is a movie where I could sit and watch it again and again and again. So for me, going into this film, I had seen the trailer. I, you know, I read up all everything as I went along. Um, but for yeah, it kept it kept falling out of my head. I it was it was not something I was interested in seeing. Um, there were no leads or anything that I knew anything about or cared about. I hadn't read the book. I'd heard did of the book. Did not give a shit about the lead. I really didn't. Well, you know, and for those at home, he's young Cyclops from the uh, the new X-Men films. Yeah, from X-Men Apocalypse. Ty Sheridan, yeah. I believe is his name. But, um, you know, I knew who the villain was. I wasn't very interested in Ben Mendelsohn. Um, and I had heard about the book uh, from... Actually, funnily enough, it was Achievement Hunter. I'm not surprised. Yeah, I believe I can't remember if it was a Minecraft video, but Achievement Hunter Jack Patillo was talking about it, and uh, he made it sound interesting. And I remember thinking that I might go and pick it up, and I, I just never got around to it. And then as time went on, I learned a little more about it. It didn't. It sounded a little more niche than I think would have been. The book did not sound. I, I the book was not something that I no. would pick up and read in a million years. And neither no. of us have read the book. Full disclosure. So yeah. we're coming from it's a virginal experience in a way, as many things uh, online are. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we won't be talking about the book much at all. I did a little bit of research after the fact, but yeah, so yeah, going into the film, I had also, not that I had low expectations, just that I had nil. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, really? You I didn't, didn't have care. anything? I, I mean, I wasn't invested. I, you know, like a couple of the films that we've had on the list so far, I, you know, I went to see it simply because it was on the list for, for the show. Oh, I don't so know funny. if I would have gone and seen it without it. Really? Yeah. I, I remember seeing the trailer and going, oh, that's cool. They've got the Iron Giant. But outside of that, I didn't give a shit. No, I, I wanted to go and see it. It looked... Because for me... So you went this, with, you I had mean, low expectations and yet you were game to see it. Because like I said, it would just... It wasn't... Uh, the reason I had low expectations is because it was on the radar. It was... It just wasn't on my radar until late. Like, I... I just... I was just coasting through. And then... The next thing I knew, we were sitting watching something and the trailer came on and I was like, oh, oh yeah, I had seen an ad for this online. And then I saw the trailer and I'm like, all right. And then it was always in like the background sort of just like, oh, I'm, I'm actually pretty keen. And then I think they released another trailer or like it just became a bit more predominant, like the clips and that on my, you know, on my social media feeds. But mm. I got really into it and really keen for it. That and um, I think 
I think the only thing that really was the, at first that I saw was the um the Halo guys, and then when I realized the this only was, Halo film we're gonna get on the big screen too. Yeah, <laughs> and then I saw like that it was all VR, mm. and I was like, I fucking want this. This is what I want in gaming for me and it's on the screen and then watching the movie tonight I got that I got like you know besides the mess you know I'm um, assuming culling of the human race and you know all the bees dying out (laughs) and all the shit that happened to get it to the point that it's at poverty wise I wouldn't want that I just want the VR (laughs) so for those of you at home if you haven't heard of this film I'd be absolutely shocked but if you haven't I'll just give you a quick rundown uh, Wade Watts, a young man living in the stacks, basically uh, slums just with piled high towers of caravans in yeah. Columbus, Ohio, uh, is a young man with not much else going on in his life. So to escape the, the drudgery of his reality. And like most of the people in this universe. And like many of the people in this world. Um, do you want to tell the bit? Sorry, I tell the bit. This is my show. It's called You're Wrong, The Great Film Debate. If you look carefully, you can actually see my name in the Y. But anyway... Um, <laughs> Bitch. And like many other people, as Heather noted, in this world, he escapes this world, this reality, into the oasis. Basically, the best VR experience you could ever think of. The perfect gaming experience where you put on a suit, depending on how much you can afford. You can get like just the goggles in the hands, or you can get the full setup where you wear a full body suit that uh, uh, reflects what happens in the games. You get hit, you feel an impact. You um, get s- through the power of the. D- I know what you're going to say. Let's not. Let's just leave that <laughs> to the imagination. Let's, yeah, there's some weird touching for what I'm sure will one day be known as a children's classic film. <laughs> Jesus. This will be, and I'm sure of it, this will be a children's classic one day. In 20 years, people are going to look back on this and go, that's why I got into filmmaking. It's incredible to see that. It's starting to. I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm getting older. Um, yeah, I freaked out the other day because I thought I saw a wrinkle. I know it's ridiculous at this age. <laughs> um, but I'm starting to look out for those moments that will not impact me that way, but will impact some other person, some young child, the way that like Jurassic Park impacted me. I did. Know- I remember thinking Jungle Book when John Favreau's Jungle Book came out, the new one. Yeah. I was like, I really enjoyed this, but this is going to change some kid's life. I did know, like watching it it felt like a kids movie like there was some serious stuff there was some adult it's, it's things definitely that happened a children's movie and, at heart yeah and like the whole way through i'm like oh don't you know it's like not that uh, maybe in the book maybe i'm getting an english teacher here where they're like you know the curtains were blue to reflect his you know state of mind and depression no they were just blue but like well no the curtains were blue because he got really lazy about hiring his decorator and that was because of his impending divorce <laughs> But no, like, it was like, you know, don't give your identity out online. Don't do this. Don't do that. Which is weird because it's kind of gone, it's kind of flipped backwards because that used to be a huge thing. Yeah. When we were kids and now it's less of a deal. Everybody's just pasting themselves all over like whores. You just got to keep all your, like, financial (laughs) shit to the side. Yeah, that's all we (laughs) ask. That's all we ask. If a Nigerian prince approaches you, unless they make a really good case, don't give them your bank details. Pretty much, yeah. Unless they make a re... Like, and I mean, like, a spectacular... Like, you know, like, they've got, like, family who've been persecuted, maybe. I don't know. And, um... Otherwise, don't pay the ferryman. And also, I noted that, um... The... All the characters, they were all individual. Like, it wasn't... No one character really looked alike. Like, the the two main ones, um, Percival and Artemis, they... They looked like they could have been made from the same program, like like same game. They had a similar texture, yeah, on their faces. Um, but whereas, and like, there's a scene where you see a Harley Quinn mm. in a in a club against something that I looks mean, it, like it's out of World of it's Warcraft. As, it's as and, varied as any video game, yeah. Particularly like if you look at like a video game like VR Chat, where you can be whatever. Yeah. Um, the licensing they must have jumped through for this film. I will oh say. Oh my god! So yeah. I've seen this film twice now. Um, there was an inexplicably high number of battle toads. There were a lot of battle toads, and like I'm, I'm not getting mixed up because I saw the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and then I also saw the battle toads. I saw battle toads show up in four separate scenes, not just way off in the distance, up in the fucking foreground. Yeah. <laughs> now. I've never actually seen a picture of a battle toad, but I know that was a battle toad, mm. and I don't know why. 
But anyway, look out for my next podcast. Uh, it's all going to be about Battletoads and Ready Player One and why they're <laughs> in my brain. Anyway, moving on. So, Heather, <laughs> uh, you came, you've you clearly enjoyed this film. I mean, she, yeah. you know, we're not going to beat around the bush. We, we both enjoyed it. Yeah. There's a lot to enjoy. Um, Very little you, to If you like on. adventure. if you We discussed it being a children's film. Um, but it's not. What was the main don't... song for the trailer? Uh, at least for the Australian trailer. Oh, I don't fucking remember. Do you remember? No. It was from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, that's right. It was a cover. Yeah. Now, oh. interestingly enough, there's a lot of similarities between the plot of this film and Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Less yeah. so between the remake. Yeah. Um, but definitely Less the original. Less Chocolate Factory than the original. Uh, that's Willy why Wonka. I'm making yeah. the distinction. So, I wonder if they went into the marketing knowing this and thinking, we'll just own it. Well, I mean, marketing. Well, I mean, if we get into a marketing discussion, this is we're not going to get into a marketing topic, discussion. But, but like, <laughs> people are going to come at this film the same way the, that they did with Avatar and Pocahontas. People are going to come at this film and they're going to rip it to shreds because there's no love left in humanity. Um, and I'm going to defend it if I can. I don't think I have to. It's going to break box office records. This is a hundred and seventy-five million dollar film made by a master at his craft at not the top of his game. But at oh, least this in my certainly opinion, puts him back up there. Though. At least in my opinion, it's the best he's been in a very long time. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we're recording this podcast on the same day that it's been announced that uh, Colin Trevorrow will take over Jurassic World three, which has <laughs> crushed me because like I caught Spielberg Dylan up a noose. Spielberg, I'm asking you, man, come on! You were the only one who made a really like properly decent Jurassic film. Please come back. Please don't. They took him off of Star Wars 9. He does not deserve Jurassic World 3. Get him away. Anyway, that's my rant. I promised I wasn't going to do that, and we'll see whether or not I leave it in. So, like, I know we we were kind of talked about it a little bit on the way in, but, like, there were... And if, this is, like, nitpicking. This is, like, really to get through everything that was great, if I'm really going to I mean, this is a film that's all about nitpicking. This is about Easter eggs. Yeah. This is an Easter egg film. Mm. This is a fat fucking movie pretty much there was a lot like that that's actually one more thing i'm like we're sitting here and we're discussing it and i'm trying to think of like everything i loved about it but there was so much and it didn't i didn't feel it didn't feel like i was sitting there for ages i felt like i was watching a very very enjoyable movie in you know a decent amount of time yeah but there was a lot to take in i kind of felt a bit overloaded in that sense it's but a it was big good movie. though it but was. it was good. I, I, I was not they bored. Everything did all the, of it. They gave you everything you needed to know to to understand what was happening. Yep. Um, but not so much that you were distracted. It was a little like the visuals. Like, there's so yeah. much you can do in a world where there are no rules, and yet they still grounded it. Yeah. Which One of the things nice. I noticed watching the film was I never got lost. No. There are yeah. several big. There's like a big race at the start of the film that's basically a GTA race. Um, there's a couple of big fights. At no point in these these scenes did I get, go like, where the f- fuck am I? Like, there was still a bit of the shaky cam stuff, but it was... But that was Corey... only when things were getting like... Sh- even even during the fight scenes, it wasn't that chaotic. It was only chaotic from yeah. the bad guy's point of view. Well then, yeah, but like, from a choreo... The way it was choreographed and shot, like, I understood where everything was. I yeah. understood the geography very well, which I think you don't see enough of. These days, it was very well thought. Everything yeah. was thought out. Everything. I, just, I it mean, was it was so better thought great. out than, you know, a lot of massive films. You'd want it to be for 175 million dollars. Oh, fuck yeah. Uh, with Spielberg at the wheel, you know, you expect a certain standard. Um, what about you? Was there anything? So well, the big wise? thing, one of the big surprises for me was Ben Mendelsohn in this film. Uh, mm. I've seen him play a few villains. Uh, the first thing I think I saw him in was Animal Kingdom. And then he turned up again in Rogue One as the villain. And in both films, he was a pretty stock villain. He just yeah. kind of looked... He had that like creepy, like semi-Harvey like Harvey Weinstein yeah. look in his eye. and Creepy he, businessman. Yeah, um, like he was, but he yeah. was still... He was simple in the head. He was just, <laughs> he was just a... He was a little slow, but very dumb. dangerous. Yeah. And I was expecting the same performance out of him today, uh, again in, in Ready Player One. I was very surprised. Mm. He played this one with a lot more fun and a lot less straight than I thought he was going to. I was really, I really enjoyed his performance in this. Even the, 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 uh, the performance capture stuff that they must have done for this film. They must have done hours of. Mm. It's always interesting to see either actors who are have been around for a very long time, or actors who have mostly worked in smaller scale films, tackle 
performers capture them for the first time, particularly when they're older, mm. because it's such a foreign concept to so many of them. I've even uh, read a, a small thing by Robert De Niro, who's firmly against it because he says it just means that actors are going to get replaced all over the world. And I'm like, listen, you, there's no point in you complaining that you're squillions, but whatever. <laughs> um, so to me, it looked like Ben Mendelsohn really reveled in the role um when he was in the in the performance capture he didn't it didn't weigh him down in a way it almost enhanced him mm. as a villain it made him more scary than he already was he was quite intimidating in in reality mm. uh and then in this other world he was still intimidating in a way a little thanos yeah yeah in terms of his build but um yeah i can get over that i thought it was a little it was just a smidge on the nose that he dressed up as like corporal punishment basically yeah like yeah. he had the suit on but the suit was like it was made of not iron. yeah it was not great it um, was really not it was great. very on the nose um the the i don't know maybe it was just me but when he when he uses that orb to put a shield out yep that looked like the the the, the thing in harry potter and in, in deathly hallows right when they teach yeah, us putting out like so? the thing like, is that what it was meant to look like? No, or? I think it was just a big shield, just a big orb. It's not the first one that's shown up in something. Harry Potter wasn't the first one that showed up either. No, but it was like that pulse emitting well, from the same thing with the was... stream and the thing. Like, But that's it not how the like film it. worked. That's not how Harry Potter worked. How Harry Potter worked was they all did it with their wands. Yeah, I know. So it didn't I'm come aware from a single that, source. But... So you can't say that that's a similarity. Well, but the and whole it had a visual, wavy... everything. Yeah, it was a large glowing sphere, but that's not a very specific visual. Yeah, and it I'm had getting gr- what I'm saying. Also, it had a, like a grid. I am getting what you're it saying. You're just wrong. You're no, st- it didn't have a grid. Yes, it did. No. Yes, it did. No. Yes, it did. No. Yes, it did. No. Yes, it did. Now you know how I feel when we were arguing it about it. It did have X-Men. a grid. It had a gritty quality to it. It wasn't a grid, but within like the textures of the actual like light and all that, it was gritty. Why are well, you I'm, complaining about I haven't that? seen it twice, so I don't know. Why? I, I have my yeah, initial that's the other, thing. I've seen it twice, and I've had time to think about all this. Does it matter if it looked was Harry Potter or not? Was it not I'm directed just curious, for you? that's all. Jesus. All right, let's talk Radio. about it. Before we... We'll cap this off with our favourite moments from the film. But before we do, I want to talk about <laughs> the Shining sequence. Oh, yeah. So, I'm not a fan of the Shining... For those at home, this is a pretty big spoiler for a pretty, like, like a 15-minute portion of the film. Mm. Oh, actually, it's prob- probably more like five or ten minutes. It's it's significant though. It's it sticks out 10. in your mind. Yeah, it's about ten. Yeah. So if you don't want to know too many spoilers, go watch the movie and come back. There's a significant portion of the film set within The Shining. Now, I've seen The Shining. I fucking loathe it as a film. I love the book because I read the book first and I thought the book was far scarier than The Shining film. I don't think The Shining's all that scary. I understand it's legendary as a horror. Heather has seen The Shining. Heather, what are your feelings on The Shining? Uh, I eat dick. Those are Heather's feelings on The Shining. <laughs> She's not even read the book. And those are her feelings on The Shining. Yeah. So, it was really interesting for me as a film buff looking at it going, how the fuck did they recreate all this stuff from the film? Have they just like layered their 3D models over the environment that they had on film from the film, the original film, The Shining? Mm. Or have they gone and painstakingly recreated the sets then put a film grain texture over everything to make it look like the original film? I don't know. I'm fucking dying to know. <laughs> so I'll probably get the specialist version of the DVD Blu-ray that I can when it comes out just There's so probably, I can know there that. There might be something online. But it was ballsy as hell. It was great, though. I it could was... not believe... This is a film that really pushed the envelope of what you can do in a kid's film, and I feel like the best kid's films always do that. Mm. But um, the Shining sequence in this film is 10 times scarier than The Shining. It wasn't that scary, but it was definitely scarier than The Shining. Uh, and it's 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 really quite fun. So let's talk about our favourite moments in the film. Heather, there what was your favourite so moment that you can many. think of off the top of your head? There were so many. Um, all right, well, the, okay, so there's a bit that was in The, sh- like the Shining – the bulk of it is one character who hates horror movies and has never seen The Shining, goes through all The Shining things, and it's like, you know, they're standing by the elevator pressing the yeah, button, there's and the you're creepy like, twins, there's oh, the God, no. Full of rusty water. Yeah. There's uh, the woman in room 237, what should have been room 217, yeah. there's the, and then there's the axe, and then there's the maze. Yeah. Now, once you get to the axe, the maze, that that's a bit much, but like, 
everything before that, I was like, oh, God, no. Because like, you know, you know, if you've seen the movie, you the, know. The music really cues it as well. Even yeah. if you've seen the Simpsons ripoff. Yeah, you know what, pretty sort of what's going to happen. That was really fun. Because I, I just, I couldn't stop laughing. It was just like, oh, but it was so funny at the same time. And then there was another bit that, and it's pretty weak source for, like, you know, picking my favourite bits and the whole thing. But, um when there's a cut to when the big battle's going on from real life to the VR. Oh, yeah. And um, it's like it shows like these little kids, like these this group of little kids fighting, cuts to them in VR and it's them as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And then there's like a group of ki- tweens, the kids that are a little bit older. What's that have to do with The Shining? And no, it's not. It's two separate things. Why'd you talk about The Shining first? Because I liked it. It was just, it was a, it was a right, okay. thing. Right, okay. You get one. Well, eat a dick. I All get right. more than one. All right, go on. And then yeah, it cuts During to the final war. Yeah, it cuts you didn't to explain them. that. I said in the final battle. Oh, I wasn't listening. No, clearly, um, <laughs> because you went waited until I was about to say the last thing before you cut me off. Yeah. Um, no, and then they and then shows you um shows you the kids as um, Halo, the Spartan. I think that I won't go into the massive details about it, but my f- there's a scene if you've seen the film, my favorite scene is the part with the chest burster. It's adorable. It's so good. Out of context, the the scene with the chest burster is adorable. <laughs> so take from that what you will. Well, I think that's all I want to say about the film without getting into like huge in depth analysis. Okay. Um, is there anything else you wanted to say? I just it was so good. It's worth the watch, even if you don't really go in for this kind of thing. It's mm. a good movie. This was yeah. This is definitely just, it's a good movie. I've I've been accused of hating movies. I've actually. I called somebody out for saying that and then they called me out and now I'm recalling them out and I'm going to see how long I can keep this trend going. <laughs> I loved this movie. I really enjoyed it. I'm, I am I, cannot remember the last time I saw a movie twice at the cinemas. Yeah. Like, I don't even know if I've done... I don't think I've done that in my adult life. Oh, I have, but that's you like... You've got problems. <laughs> I've got... Yeah, out of the two yeah, of us, you've got I've me. got There's problems. problems. <laughs> I've got, I'm like 10 of your problems right there. I am all 99 of your problems, <laughs> but Dylan running away ain't one. Anyway. All right, guys. Thanks for uh, watching and checking out our little chibis. If you, um, we're, you'll notice we're trying a different style. This time we've actually very deliberately not shot everything on camera because we want to explore using the chibis more often. So if you prefer, uh, the video footage or if you prefer using the, uh, cartoon versions of us, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear what you think. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all there is to it. Go ahead and like and subscribe if you liked it, even if you didn't. Check us out on Facebook. Check us out on the website, secret-source.media. And we'll see you guys next time. My name's Dylan. I'm Heather. And this has been You're On, the great film debate. Bye, guys. Later. <laughs>